in fantasy and science fiction, we imagine what it would be like to meet other intelligent species that are similar to us, but not identical to us. However, you may need to put this simplistic, out-of-Africa theory of human evolution in the dustbin of history. In recent years, numerous new fossils and genomic analysis have radically changed the history of human evolution. Our species, Homo sapiens sapiens, evolved about 150,000 years ago, developing modern behavior about 80,000 years ago, and then sweeping out of Africa to colonize the rest of the world, completely replacing any prehistoric humans they encountered. This is how the origins of our species were previously believed to have occurred. The out part is a central pillar of the out of Africa model of human origins. According to this theory, our species left Africa around 60,000 years ago and spread across Eurasia in an epic sweep. For a long time, cracks in that paradigm have been growing. But new fossils, tools, and analysis of ancient and modern genomes are shattering that neat theory. With the dust still settling, the question now is how many, if any, of our previous assumptions still hold true. Indeed, some paleoanthropologists are asking, should we be considering a completely different model of human evolution? The out of Africa paradigm has become so ingrained that it is easy to lose sight of how new it is. For decades before its discovery, human origins research was dominated by the story's early characters. Homo erectus, including Peking Man, discovered in China, Java Man, discovered in Indonesia, and Australopithecus afarensis, the famous Lucy, discovered in Ethiopia. There was some debate about where modern humans first appeared, and theories of a recent African origin circulated but the fossil record seemed to support a model known as multi-regionalism. This theory proposed that archaic humans spread across Africa and Eurasia at least a million years ago and evolved in tandem with modern humans. It was quickly incorporated into the recent out-of-Africa model, the notion that modern humans appeared suddenly in eastern or southern Africa between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago and went on to conquer the world. The theory also distinguished between anatomical and behavioral modernity. According to archaeological evidence, early Homo sapiens had bodies very similar to ours, but were not mentally advanced. Only later, around 60,000 or 80,000 years ago, did the entire package evolve, possibly as a result of a chance mutation, allowing for dispersal outside of Africa. This neat, highly compelling narrative became known as the Human Revolution. For a time, the fossil evidence corroborated this story, although there were no remains from the critical period of about 150,000 years ago. There were several older human skulls that seemed to fit the idea. It got even better when paleontologists discovered three human skulls, including two adults and a juvenile in Ethiopia. The Herto hominins are between 154,000 and 160,000 years old, with a mix of archaic and modern facial and cranial features. They were found with tools that integrated both ancient and contemporary Stone Age technology. The researchers were sure that the hominins were the likely immediate ancestors of anatomically modern humans, due to the fact that their age, location and toolset matched the recent out-of-Africa scenario precisely. However, that was the high point. Since then, it has been difficult, if not impossible, to fit fresh discoveries into this neat little box. Contrary to popular belief, paradigm-shifting moments in science, in which our understanding of a particular explanation is called into question by a single finding, are actually quite rare. Remarkably, a technological revolution swept across Africa 320,000 years ago. The large, flat, leaf-shaped hand axes that had largely remained unchanged for 700,000 years were suddenly replaced by a more sophisticated toolkit of smaller, finer points and projectiles. This transition is increasingly recognized by paleoanthropologists as indicating the dawn of the modern mind when people who looked like us began to think like us. It was not only a technological revolution, but also a cognitive one. 
many people believe that human evolution followed a very straight line, from primitive creatures to ourselves. But for the majority of evolution's history, there were various hominid species walking and climbing over the African continent, each with a special physical adaptation to the demands of existence. As with any evolutionary experiment, some of these adaptations were more successful than others. Paleoanthropologists thought they had a good understanding of how the experiment's results unfolded based on careful study of fossils dating back millions of years in Africa. Human evolution was not a straight line, but rather a complicated tree with branches branching off in all directions. Nonetheless, there were clear trends that made their way into our textbooks. Hominin lineages with certain trait combinations died out, leaving no descendants. For example, brains grew larger, legs grew longer, arms grew shorter, fingers became less curved, and teeth grew smaller in the lineages that survived. Recently, a new species that Lee Berger discovered in a South African cave seems to initially fit into this framework and made the most sense. Homo naledi, as the species is known, has certain very basic morphological traits that suggested it was very old, possibly two million years old, not far from the origin of our genus. But not all paleoanthropologists are ecstatic about this discovery. Anthropologist Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum in London told The Guardian, it's impossible to evaluate Lee Berger's claims properly without seeing the full evidence. With all due respect to Lee and his teams for a series of fantastic discoveries, this is not the way to conduct science or advance scientific debate on potentially life-changing discoveries. The standard out-of-Africa model holds that when our species first spread across Eurasia, we completely replaced the more archaic humans we encountered. We are, without a doubt, the last hominins on the planet. Whether Homo sapiens was responsible for the extinction of the other species is still being debated. In recent years, it has become clear that these encounters were not entirely violent and destructive. Our closest relatives, the Neanderthals and Denisovans, were extinct tens of thousands of years ago. Nonetheless, most people on the planet have small amounts of DNA inherited from one or both species in their genomes. This shows that sapiens interbred with them, and that at least some of these encounters resulted in fertile offspring. Some living people today carry ghost DNA from other species, known as Species X, the fossils of which have yet to be discovered. It was once thought that interbreeding between early humans and other hominins occurred only outside of Africa. But a trace of Neanderthal DNA has been discovered in the genomes of Africans. But because Neanderthals do not appear to have lived on that continent, it almost certainly arrived as a result of early humans migrating back to Africa from Eurasia. Recent research suggests that there was interbreeding with other hominins on the continent. Who are these mystery ancestors whose DNA is lurking in our genes? Homo naledi, the primitive-looking hominin discovered in South Africa and thought to have lived until 250,000 years ago, is one candidate. In fact, Homo naledi may have used fire to cook and navigate. Archaeologists claim to have discovered evidence that Homo naledi, an ancient human species with a tiny brain, used fire to cook and light up dark tunnels though this claim is debatable. Despite having a brain one-third of the size of ours, archaeological evidence suggests that Homo naledi, a primitive human species with a chimp-like skull, used fires to cook food and navigate in the darkness of underground caves. Archaeologists have a lot of evidence, including huge charcoal lumps, thousands of burned bones, massive hearths, and baked clay. This discovery, which is still being studied and is controversial, has the potential to change our understanding of the evolution of complex behaviors that were previously thought to be the sole domain of large brain species like modern humans and Neanderthals. We now understand that an adult Homo naledi averaged a height of 4 foot 8 inches tall with a weight of 88 pounds, which is not far outside the range of some modern female populations. It exhibited a strange blend of ancient and contemporary traits, including shoulders that resembled apes, a tiny brain that was little bigger than a chimpanzee, and teeth that more closely resembled something millions of years old. But the dating of its fossil remains showed that it lived relatively recently 
between 230,000 to 330,000 years ago, suggesting that it might have coexisted with Homo sapiens, who emerged around 300,000 years ago. However, there were still unanswered issues regarding how Homo naledi maneuvered through the maze-like network of underground caves at Rising Star, which are completely dark and demand intricate maneuvers via seven-inch wide cracks in the rock. A tiny hearth with burnt antelope bones was discovered in another part of the cave system, followed by a large hearth 14 inches below the cave floor. Then, in another area of the cave system, archaeologists discovered a stack of burnt rocks with an ash and burnt bone base. This is a surprising discovery because many scholars believed it was impossible for such a small-brained hominid to create and use fire inside a cave system. Although there is evidence that ancient humans in what is now Kenya could control fire 1.5 million years ago, this ability is typically associated with larger-brained Homo erectus. Homo naledi also appears to have used the space in novel ways, with body disposal in one space and cooking in adjacent spaces. The capacity to make and use fire finally shows us how Homo naledi ventured so deep into dangerous spaces and explains how they may have moved their dead kin into such spaces, something likely impossible without light. It also suggests the emergence of a complex Homo naledi culture, according to Lee Berger. Because dating of the charred remains is still ongoing, the decision to announce the fire discovery prior to the publication of formal scientific analysis has proven contentious. The discovery that Homo naledi may have been able to control fire, on the other hand, could provide insight into how they treated their dead and their social organization. The interpretation of burial customs at the site could be greatly affected if it was determined that Homo naledi had mastered fire and utilized it to enter the most remote regions of the Rising Star Cave system. In the case of mortuary procedures, controlling an artificial light source enables the arrangement of actions in both space and time, as well as the participation of numerous group members in cooperative and shared acts. Indeed, the discovery of fire use has even more revolutionary implications. If these small-brained humans with many primitive features were capable of the complex cognition required to make and control fire, we would be witnessing the emergence of a cultural pathway and behavior that we previously thought was reserved for Homo sapiens. The evidence of hominins deliberately exposing their food to heat is gradually being pushed back. Remarkably, 780,000 years ago, early humans may have cooked fish in earthen ovens. It is also when brains grew to be much larger. The evolution of large brains was aided by cooked food, which is more nutritious and easier to chew. This was a big leap when it was first proposed because hard evidence of cooking was limited to relatively recent periods. The most visible traces of cooking are organic remains, which decay over time, unlike resilient items such as stone tools. Cooked food is more nutritious, easier to digest and safer to consume. The fact that these populations were cooking their fish demonstrates their advanced cognitive abilities which may have been greater than many scientists previously thought. If they already knew how to control fire, it's only natural that they'd use it for cooking. Furthermore, when compared to holding your food over a fire, earthen ovens are a fairly advanced form of cooking. That suggests to me that cooking dates back even further than Homo naledi or even Homo erectus. So, our neat theory of human evolution has been put into doubt by the recent finding of a new group of Homo naledi bones in a different chamber of the same cave system, as well as the first direct dates of earlier Homo naledi skeletons. Unexpectedly, the remains were only 236,000 to 335,000 years old. This places Homo naledi in the same epoch as early modern Homo sapiens elsewhere in Africa. Homo naledi possessed a strange mosaic of primitive, ancient, and derived more human-like traits, such as small brain sizes, but human-like hands and limbs. One reason paleoanthropologists are upset is that it implies that some features, such as small brain sizes, persisted long after they thought it was possible. Anthropologists argue that, in light of this, we should be concerned about fossils assigned to species based on morphology rather than direct dates. If some remains were misclassified, we may need to reconsider how different hominin lineages evolved. 
Another implication of these dates is that these hominins were in South Africa at the time when stone tools were invented. While they have not been discovered in conjunction with any tools in the cave, we must remain open to the possibility that these small-brained hominins created them. Finally, whether or not the Homo naledi remains were intentionally buried inside the cave is still a hotly debated topic among paleoanthropologists. These possibilities, which are still unproven, pose a significant challenge for archaeologists to grapple with the concept of Homo sapiens as the inventor of culture. So, where does Homo naledi fit into the larger picture of human evolution? It is yet to be resolved, but there are three scenarios. First, Homo naledi is a member of the lineage that includes Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis, and Homo floresiensis. Homo naledi, on the other hand, is younger, a sister lineage to the clade that includes Homo erectus and the big-brained later hominins, including Homo sapiens. The final possibility is that Homo naledi is an even younger species, a sister lineage to Homo sapiens. A final possibility is that Homo naledi is a hybrid of two or more lineages, possibly one related to humans and one related to Australopithecines. The odd blend of evolved and primitive traits found in Homo naledi makes it challenging to differentiate between the aforementioned possibilities without genetic proof. If we could collect a genome from one or more Homo naledi fossils, we could discover the evolutionary link between Homo naledi and the big-brained hominins. This would show if human populations descended from this group or not, and perhaps others. The answers to these questions may provide some insight into the species' social structure, whether the individuals buried within the cave formed a single population close in time, or whether there is detectable genetic change in the individuals within the cave over time. We could also use the molecular clock to estimate when Homo naledi diverged from the other hominins. In fact, Ancient DNA could provide answers to many questions about Homo naledi's ancestry and relationships. While the dates of these fossils are well within the range of ancient DNA that can be obtained, currently up to 560,000 to 780,000 years ago, attempts to obtain ancient DNA from Homo naledi remains have thus far proven unsuccessful. Many factors influence ancient DNA preservation, including the temperature, UV radiation, and pH of the remains, the type of bone, tooth, or tissue being sampled, and the amount of water, salinity, microbes, and oxygen present in the depositional context. This is why, no matter how hard you try, some very old bones will reveal their genetic secrets, whereas others, only a few hundreds of years old, will not. Their position in our family tree now looks to be uncertain, similar to Homo floresiensis, the other small-brained hominid that endured until fairly recently, 50,000 years ago, serving as a reminder to us of how much more we still need to discover.